DVD vor meldet sich wieder live vom ersten Weekend of Horrors in Wien. Neben mir sitzt Nick Principi von Late to Rest 1 and 2 und Hatchet 2. Um, the first thing I would like to ask you is, how did you get into acting and especially how did you get to Late to Rest? Uh, well, I mean, acting, if you call what I do acting, thank you. Other people might call it other things, but we would call those unkind people. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I used to I used to fight like mixed martial arts kind of stuff, and um, that got me to meet some stunt coordinators and who were fight coordinating kind of people, and just said I would make for like a good bad guy. And then I uh, did a few stunt gigs here and there, and then um, I got laid to rest by um, working on a movie called Killer Pad that Robert England, Frank Krueger, directed, and uh, me and Robert Hall both took the movie because we wanted to both work for Freddy, you know. And on that set we just talked about like a lot of the movies that we liked and you know he knew that I did a lot of creature work and stuff like that and I just said I always wanted to play a slasher. I wanted to, you know, I've gotten some like offers but it's nothing really good. And then just fast forward like two years later, he's like I wrote and I'm going to direct a slasher movie and I want you to be the guy. And I was just flattered. That's how it happened. You manage Robert England and Freddy Krueger. Um, who is your personal favorite horror icon? <sighs> I hate to kiss his ass now because he's a good friend, but Kane Hodder. Um, I mean, he was like the first guy. I'd say him and like actually like C.J. Graham, the guy uh, was Jason in Part Six. Um, those were the guys where I, when I first found out I was always wanting to be like the killer and the monster and the creature and I was always like how did these guys get the jobs and I always found out I found out that it was always stuntmen that did it and since Kane was like the first Jason to play it a couple times he became like a hero of mine and um, now he just busts my balls all the time and like messes with me and I try to mess back but it's I don't know it's hard messing with your heroes and um, I've gotten to work with him like a couple times on a web show called uh, Fear Clinic, and then uh, Hatchet Two, which was awesome. Just yeah, I mean, I mean, come on, I mean, who doesn't want to work with their heroes? You know, it's really, really great day for me. You're mentioning the heroes. You know, we have Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers. Do you think uh, the horror spotlight has room for more and new kind of icons like Chrome Skull, the Orphan Killer, and? Who you want to call? Why? Well, I said orphan killer. It's funny. Um, I just met that guy in Virginia not so long ago. Um, when I think icon, and people have said Chrome Skull, you know, icon and stuff, it's too early to tell. I mean, I think like Michael Myers, Leatherface, Jason, all like the classics, they've been around for decades. And if these characters can stand that test of time, then absolutely. But for right now, I think it's too early to say, but it's flattering to hear it, you know. But we'll see, you know, we'll just see in time, hopefully, you know, it'd be cool. You're working a lot with special effects and gore effects on your movie. Can you describe to us how it's being put together, like the effects and the scene, how it's shot and how you come into play as the killer? the, let's say, the guy who inflicts the damage? Right. Um, I would say in movies it is practical effects opposed to CG effects are the most painstaking process possible. You'll, these effects guys, sometimes as much as 12 or 15 people will work weeks on an effect that will shoot for three hours that will be in the movie for 30 seconds, which is insane to me, you know? And um, I would say my part in it, it, all the credit always goes to the special effects guys, and I'm just another tool to get that effect off, like to sell that as much as I possibly can. And I just, you know, play my part in that giant machine. And just hope for the best, you know? Do you have a favorite effect or a favorite kill from Late to Rest 1 and 2? Oh, always the Jonathan Check kill, where the knife 
goes into his face and it cuts off his face by hitting him on the top. That is just probably the most brutal gag I've ever been a part of. And there's absolutely no CG involved in that, which is even better. You know, I because I, I can't stand computer generated effects. It's just annoying to me. Since we're talking about effects and maybe let's go into movie censorship a little because Later S2 has just been released in Germany in a version that's only missing nine minutes yeah. of effects work. Yeah. What, what do you think about that? Uh, it's, it's insulting. It's just flat out insulting and I would ask fans to... Um, geez. It's my understanding that the Austrian version and the Swiss version has the they minutes. They will in be it, uncut, but they're just generally released a few months a later. A little bit later. Um, I would hope that you could maybe wait. I understand, you know, um, and just please know that the filmmakers and everyone involved in it have nothing to do with it, and no one is more angry about it than us. Um, it's just a complete slap in the face. Um, because we try so hard to bring fans the most brutal, gore-drenched effects that we possibly can. I mean, we literally would sit and think about stuff that just hasn't been done in movies and we try and try and try. And then when something like this happens, it's just, it's insulting. I mean, it's just insulting that, you know, someone can just take, because you know what, it's horror films and it's schlock maybe to most people, but it's still art. It's still art, and that's them butchering it, just ruining it, you know? And I just can't apologize enough and just make them pay for it, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, seek it elsewhere, that's the best I can do. Try to order it from the States, I guess, you do that, or... I don't, know. don't download it, though. Try not to. Yeah. Can you imagine going even further with the effects than in Late Terrest 2? We have to! If we're gonna do a third one, we have to. I think that's why there's so much time in between them. Is there's so many sleepless nights of just thinking like, how are we gonna kill people now? Like, and then new movies come out and they're thinking hard too about how to do other things. And it's always a competition. Well, not so much a competition, but it's just a race just so we can get this stuff out first and whatnot. And um, it's just hard, you know, because every time, the body count has to be higher, the kills have to be more extreme, and that's your job to deliver that. So, you know, for I think as long as we can keep doing that, we'll keep making them, and then if we can't do it, then we'll just happily bow out, because I'd rather make, make nothing than just make something completely mediocre, you know, so. You said if we're gonna make the third one. Can you tell me, or tell us, are you gonna do it, or? Well, yeah, when I say if, I just mean it won't happen until everybody's happy with the script and there's things like that. And there's treatments, you know, treatments is like, you know, a two-page thing of like an outline of like things to come. And it will happen. It will happen. I just couldn't tell you when. That's the best I could say. And that's just what I honestly know. I mean, if I knew that we were doing it sooner, I would say it. But to my knowledge, it's just, yeah, yeah, when it happens, it happens, but it will happen. That much I can promise. And in closing, can you tell us something about your personal con experiences? Is there anything really fun that has happened to you? Oh, I mean, people are just the blob, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, like... Just here in like Austria, the, um, the drummer from a band called uh, Pungent Stench, a death metal band from Austria, he came up and he said, you remembered my old hardcore band playing in like 2003 where we were talking about that club called Arena, whatever, I mean, that's really cool. Um, and then it's like, uh, you know, when you go out afterwards and like have a few drinks, that's when like the real stories and fun comes out and things like that. But I mean, you know, very rarely is there something that happens to like upset you or something like that and it's, it's just so hard to get me angry you know I mean everybody you're all here for the right reason you're not here to like you know everybody's here because they love horror movies so it's just you know everybody's got the same kind of focus at least you know so but yeah no, I mean I, I love these things I love them. I mean I can't do them all the time just because you know uh, 
I love my woman too much. I like spending time with her. I love my free time and like, you know, working on films is, you know, like 12 hour days all the time. So when you get days off, you really just want to just sit there and do nothing. But anytime it comes up where, you know, it's just the right time and things like that, I, I will do these conventions for as long as they keep asking me, you know? Um, other than later as to are there any future plans and future projects you would like to tell us about spoil things maybe a little for us uh well i did a, um a revenge movie called american muscle where i was the lead in that uh, it's a good guy that was a really brutal shoot a lot of problems with that but hopefully the end result will be really really good um, I got a movie with uh, Eric Roberts. I'm shooting almost as soon as I get back from this, which is kind of like a thriller, or whatever. Or he plays a, a killer guy, or whatever. That should be interesting, too. But I'm not gonna talk about them until they become more real. You know, right now it's just talk, and I have no time for just talk. You know, as soon as you put the contracts out and sign, I'll be happy to talk about the movies. You know what I mean? But like. For as long as it's just talk and, you know, not going to promote it. But, yeah, well, you know, staying busy. I'm trying to stay busy. <laughs> so. It's okay. I say thanks a lot for joining me. Thanks oh. for the interview. It oh, was no, great. thank you so much. And I say thank you, thank you for watching. Tschüss.